Hi, and welcome to the Van Arts Podcast. My name is Scott Hastings. We're here at Van Arts in the beautiful British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. And uh, we're here to, to uh, have a little fun talking about media. And today we're going to focus on animation, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm the uh, head of the Art Foundation program here at Van, Mar Van Arts. It's a six-month program. Uh, we have a lot of one-year uh, diploma programs. This is our uh, 27th year. Uh, in uh, in existence here at Van Arts. I'm very proud of that. Established 1995. We love nurturing uh, the artists of the next generation. Uh, it's one of our favorite things to do. Uh, my favorite thing about Van Arts is that I help people uh, re reach their goals in terms of becoming artists, and then in turn, they create art that I get to enjoy. Uh, so I get to go to the movies, I get to play video games, and, uh, and know when I watch those credit rolls by. I know a few of those names. I know a few of those people, and it feels really good. Uh, Van Arts has a lot of programs that we work with. Uh, we got the web development and digital design. We have a program on visual effects in film and television. We have an acting program for film and television, professional photography, game art and design, 3D animation for character, 2D character animation, and, of course, uh, Art Foundation. Today's focus, we're going to talk about 2D animation. Uh, we're deep, diving deep into that world. Uh, we've got some very, very interest, uh, interesting guests today. Uh, and it's a, an amazing art form that's been around quite a long time, hasn't it? Uh, decades, it says here. But I, I'd say it's well over 100 years uh, we've been animating in this world. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yes. We get from one of my guests. I'm thinking about iconic characters like Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, uh, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, and whatnot over the years. 2D animation has evolved, blending traditional techniques with digital technology, and today it's still thriving. In fact, it's experiencing resurgence in popularity thanks to the unique charm of its artistic possibilities. So why is 2D animation so appealing still to this day? It allows people to bring characters and stories to life that feels timeless authenticity to hand-drawn characters and, and crafted uh, uh, characters a little bit different than 3d and i've always seen is that um especially here at van arts where we've seen i've seen 2d characters and uh, that are all custom crafted by by the students themselves and rigged and, and uh, created whereas 3d we tend to often use existing models and whatnot so it's, we see a lot more of the student style and art coming through these 2d animation which is really cool I'm really pleased to bring three different perspectives of the 2D world uh, to you today. Um, I have three guests. Uh, uh, Mika Stewart is in T Ottawa, and we'll bring her up in a, in a little tiny bit. She's a Van Arts grad who's had terrific success uh, in the industry. In 2018, she was Emmy, uh, Emmy nominated for the Outstanding Director in a Preschool Series. Uh, the show was Through the Woods. She worked nearly all aspects of the animation pipeline, from concept to storyboarding, through rigging and animation, to directing both 2D and 3D television features. She's directing a show for Nickelodeon right now, which she's not allowed to talk about, uh, which we will apparently uh, try and pull some secrets out. I'm just kidding. No, we won't bother, bother her about that. We know about NDAs here, and, yeah. and so we, uh, we won't be prying on that, but we might be talking about all sorts of aspects of 2D animation. But before we speak with Mika, I'm very excited to introduce Van Arts 2D 3D head of department, Wayne Gilbert. Uh, oh, yeah. that's you. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wayne and I uh, always have fun at work. Uh, probably consider ourselves more than just colleagues, oh. friends. And uh, Wayne's been uh, in the animation industry for uh, just a couple of years. Yes. Just a few years. More than two. And I've heard him on multiple occasions refer to the, the, the breadth of his animation history, including everything from Star Wars to Care Bears. <laughs> yes, yes, I do admit Care Bears, yes. Uh, he is a Canadian, but he's worked in California for many years and has mentored and taught countless animators all over the world. Um, hi, Wayne. Hello, Scott. <laughs> yes, animation's been crazy. Commercials, half-hour television specials, Care Bears, shoes, sandwich bags. It's amazing what you end up doing. <clears throat> also, uh, today have a, an, another very, very special guest. Um, and this very special guest is <clears throat> Maria Shakula. Right. Did I say right? <laughs> Shakula. Shakula. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Maria is a 2D animation grad, uh, recently uh, graduated from Van Arts, uh, and he is currently working at Atomic Cartoons. Uh, 
quick backstory. Um, Maria is from the Ukraine. Uh, Van Arts wanted to do something to help uh, when uh, everything kind of went afoul in the Ukraine. And the founder of uh, Van Arts, Alan Phillips, uh, decided to offer scholarships uh, to students from the Ukraine. Uh, There's so many applicants that we ended up with more than 20, which was <laughs> lovely and wonderful, uh, and about a million dollars in scholarships. So we're very proud of Maria and her classmates from the Ukraine. Uh, welcome. Maria. Thank you, Scott. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> and it's great to see you, too. Uh, actually, Maria said that it felt like being home again when she came in today. Oh, home again? Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Um, yeah, well, welcome to the first podcast, the pilot of the pilot podcast of Vanners. You know, what handshakes. You. <laughs> yeah, how did you find out about Vanners, Maria? I was just at home back in Ukraine still, and I just was scrolling nonchalantly through my Instagram when I saw just random ad saying scholarships for Ukrainian students to the animation. And I was like, yeah, I don't have anything else to do. I made a portfolio in like a week or so as a joke, but I didn't, I don't think it's a joke anymore. <laughs> And now, after one and a half year, I guess now, I'm here. I have a job. That's what was it? Uh, what was your experience at Van Arts like? Amazing. Uh, I spent more time here than I spent in my apartment, so I guess it's saying something. I do feel here like home. It feels very nice. It was very sad to leave, but yeah, it was amazing. Everyone here was amazing. I just. Just gonna start crying. <laughs> I'm gonna be here again. Well, before you tear up, well, why, uh, maybe you can explain what was it? I mean, you had the scholarship was for any of the programs at the school. Mm -hmm. um, why did you pick 2D animation in particular? Well, I always wanted to do something big and shiny and colorful. I always watched cartoons and always wanted to be a part of it, but I never thought that I can actually do that, uh, especially. <clears throat> Industry back in Ukraine is not as developed as here. So I never thought about actually going and setting animation there, but I always wanted to, I really wanted to. And when I saw 2G animation, even though I didn't have any experience at all in this field, I was so excited. And it's, for me, it's more interesting than 3D animation because you can do things from scratch. It takes time, but you can, express anything you want. You can draw a little sketch and in some time it can become a full on cartoon or a movie. So that's exciting. And yeah, I just took a chance, tried, and it worked out amazingly. So that's cool. What was it like <clears throat> uh, having uh, someone with uh, such like great uh, experience uh, in the industry uh, mentoring you as an animator, and I'm referring to the gentleman sitting next to you right now. It was very nice. <laughs> uh, I yeah, never... I, I've heard that Wayne can be really mean and cruel in the classrooms. Is that is that true? Him? <laughs> Did you see A him? Care Bear? <laughs> Care Bear? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking, of course. What? Uh, yeah, was it? You enjoyed it? Yes. Yeah, very much so. Uh, when I just started, I was online. And I didn't really know what I was applying to that much because I had no idea what was going on. Like, like I said, I, uh, I learned about the school existence like about uh, two weeks before starting studying there. Two weeks. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and uh, I didn't really know what was going on, but. When I had my first lesson, I already got so excited. It was very nice. Every Everyone appeared to be very kind and so interesting. Like back in my university that I studied before Van Art, I never was as involved in classwork and never was listening as precisely <laughs> to anyone because it's something you're passionate about. It's very interesting. You want to learn as much as you possibly can. And it appears you can learn a lot and you will be learning all throughout your life. And uh, I'm very grateful that I had a very nice start with it. And I got very, very inspired and I am still shining with inspiration. Yeah. Right 
And you're still smiling, which is right. Right as rain. Uh, the uh, um, speaking about rain, um, I know it's not raining today, but uh, you are been living in Vancouver for the last year and a bit. Um, how, how have you found Vancouver? I want to stay here. <laughs> no, it's very nice. I didn't. I I expected it to be rainy, but it's not as rainy as everyone talks about it. It's actually this summer was very sunny. This summer was really sunny quite sunny yeah quite warm. yeah so no it's it's very nice uh winter also very good not as cruel as in ukraine so <laughs> that was good i really like the city it has everything it has mountains it has uh ocean it has lakes anything you can possibly want from a nature from a city it's very good and right. transit amazing i agree <laughs> I think that is pretty good. I I uh, rely heavily on it <laughs> myself. Uh, now you graduated not that long ago, and uh, you have been working at Atomic Cartoons. Um, how have you found at, at Atomic Cartoons? Great, actually, uh, it's as good as everyone talks about it. Actually, uh, everyone is very nice. Um, it's very easy to go with the flow there. Uh, just take one day at a time and you're just full on working after one week or less of training it's like very quick everyone knows what they are talking about and uh, it's it's very easy to get like in the environment there i'm also studying in studio right now there are not that many people but with time i noticed there are more and more people after all the pandemic stuff happened now it's more people and I actually say hi to them. And also I didn't go there yet, but I know they are doing the live drawing sessions now oh, cool. in studio. So I'm trying to get the chance to do that as well. And I'm going to ask you a question. Absolutely. Your transition into the studio, do you think that was very much in part of the way we teach workflow here? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, also to mention that I'm actually a setup artist right now. And all the people that I'm working with at first were thinking that I was working before. Everyone thought that I was either an animator or setup artist before, but I actually just straight up graduated and got this position. So they didn't take too long to train me. Like I said, the first week I just started working and it got to that point when I could finish my work before the deadline. I had to do the episode of setup um, during the week until Friday and I finished it on like uh, midday Wednesday. So wow, <laughs> uh, with all the knowledge that I know, with all the shortcuts that I know, uh, it's very easy for me and so I already got a chance to animate a little bit and do the posing for a different show so it's like it's very good for what they're waiting uh from me I had enough knowledge to just start working so that's nice well that's but you also worked very hard while you were here and you enjoyed it so that yes, was I did. It. yes and yeah, so. that would, <laughs> you get what you put in you get out what you put in that's absolutely right <laughs> um thank you maria for being here for our first podcast i really sure. appreciate you coming in on, on your saturday um we're very proud of you and all of your ukrainian classmates and all of your classmates in general um and i believe we if people are interested in seeing your art they can follow you at m at mm dot aster a-s-t-e-r yeah dot art <laughs> dot art yeah at mm dot a s t e r dot a r t. Yes. Thank you. What I'd love to do is have us all uh, uh, greet another guest, our third guest on the show, um, and uh, and hang out and chat with uh, someone who also worked at Atomic Cartoons and uh, an alumni of Van Arts. I'm going to sort of cue this up here. We've got uh, waiting in the wings. Uh, the lovely and wonderful Mika Stewart. Now, can you get my face out of there? Hello. Hi, Mika. <laughs> How's it going? Wonderful. Uh, as, thank you again for uh, joining us. It's a 
privilege to be here. <laughs> and as a as a super former banners student. Yeah, super former. Yeah, we won't we won't talk about how many uh, years ago, but uh this is um I don't mind. <laughs> uh well, let's 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 travel back in time then and talk about when you actually started uh, uh, before Van Arts. And I and I've I've seen um, interviews with you before, Mika. So, but you, I I heard that uh, art's been a part of your life for a very very long time. My entire life. I'm a daughter of an artist. I'm a granddaughter of an artist. I'm a great granddaughter of an artist. It was if if. Well, my brother is the one who he went into business and <laughs> economics. He he's the weird one. My family's all artists. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, so, normally yeah. The, the opposite. Why didn't you become a lawyer or a doctor? Why, yeah. aren't, why aren't you drawing and throwing paint at the wall? He he is very creative in his own way. So, but yeah, he went a different route. Um, As we do. Uh, how did you find out about Van Arts? You know what? I was trying to think of it. And I honestly cannot remember. I, I'm i wondering because, okay, just to date myself, because we have to, um, I went to Van Arts in 1999. So I actually did a Bachelor of Fine Arts first at, a, at University of Windsor. And because the internet was not so much of a thing, I genuinely feel it must have been in a magazine because okay. Van Arts at that point, like it, I'm an, I live in Ontario, I'm from Ontario, and, you know, there was really one animation school to go to, and I don't remember in high school, like, arts being a focus when universities and colleges would come, so I genuinely feel it must have been a magazine, and um, similar to Maria in the sense that I just applied, and I didn't know really anything about the school, and I got in, and I went, okay, I'm going to, I'm moving to Vancouver, <laughs> And, and it's funny because again, I said, my father's an artist. He was a, he's a, he was a college professor at the time and he and my mother had gone out to Vancouver and he came to the school before I did, because he wanted to see where am I sending my daughter? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, of course. So, so um, yeah, he, and even he, he was like, I love it. It's great. So yeah, I um, was in the early days of, I met, like I, Lee Mishkin was one of my professors. Oh, that's awesome! Founders. Yeah, that, he was a lovely gentleman. And that was all hand drawn when you were in school. All hand drawn. There was three D. There was definitely because it was really only two programs. It was two D or three D. Um, and um, so someone, uh, Lee, I found there was only three females in my my class, and Lee was someone who was really putting an emphasis, as, you know especially at that time females in the industry was pretty small and I remember him like talking to the three women and 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 telling us about different artists in the industry and like really trying to push and it was pretty amazing um and yeah us but I did it all it was all hand-drawn animation when I was doing it and <laughs> two students shared a computer and we would go and like take pictures of our animation and then we shared one computer that we could watch it on <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that so when I've I, I've been back it when I was here it was Van or there it was Van Arts was on Beatty Street okay. um, and I've been not to this one I've been to one of the more modern ones and I remember walking in and going oh my god this school is amazing like it's grown so much and uh, I Van Arts is still a, a school like you know there's there's certain animation schools people mention here in Ontario, and I'm like, you know what? You can you should also look elsewhere. I said I went to, at that point, it was a small school, and I was industry ready when I when I left. So it was amazing. Right on. That's uh, that sounds like we're paying you for an advertisement, <laughs> uh, which we're not, by the way. No, I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> You have, uh, um, actually, and I do too, actually, I'm, I'm seeing my notes here. I'm like, these are all shows that I love too, but you have a, a fondness for, for kids TV. Yes. Um, and I know that I grew up um, as a massive fan of, of pretty much anything that Jim Henson produced. But uh, in my oh, yes. notes here, I see a very specific reference to Sesame Street. Is there a particular? Of course, Sesame Street and um, 
I mean, that was, I was so excited because I had afternoon kindergarten. There was, you know, you had half day kindergarten and I got afternoon kindergarten because that meant I could watch Mr. Dress Up in Sesame Street. Nice. <laughs> so, um, I mean, who doesn't, wait, who doesn't of my generation know the, the ladybugs picnic and like the one, two, three, four, well, five. I was about to and sing like, that. Actually. I <laughs> I'm not going to gonna sing for you. Um, uh, but yeah, the animated stuff was amazing. And it's I, kids are still watching it and yeah. um you know you you can still you can still sing those songs <laughs> so yeah it's amazing you're saying they still sing those songs um <laughs> do you um, now as a, i'm a musician and i was just now i'm curious again, how much do you bring that kind of influence of music into your your directing for instance well <laughs> Because I'm primarily, for the most part, I've done preschool shows yep. um, or young, young shows. Um, I did a lot of educational shows. I've done a lot of preschool shows. And music is a huge component in it. Um, <laughs> I know uh, uh, Wayne mentioned uh, Care Bears. I did Caillou. So there's a lot of singing Caillou. <laughs> and, um, but um, yeah, songs... I can still, even though I animated on Caillou 20 years ago, I can still remember all the songs that I animated. And uh, I know I said I can't mention the show that I'm working on, and I cannot, and I will not, but there's a huge musical component, and cool. all, all of us who work on it sing the songs all the time. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Um, I find music in animation, like when you're an animator, even. I loved animating songs because I felt like the music, like, really dictated what you were going to animate even if you had a very simple storyboard or like a to go along to music drives it like the beat the words everything is is such a fun way to animate i always ask for songs i love the sound i loved would... animating dancing i loved animating singing i loved animating songs <laughs> that's awesome so. uh i'm just sort of curious now uh, wayne have you had to animate singing and dancing no <laughs> no but the way music comes into play is i love i have done six or seven animatics just for fun they'll never become films i've made five short films but uh <clears throat> music drives them and what we show here at school is an animatic without music and then put different types of music on it and it changes the dynamics of the story completely Absolutely. So, <clears throat> Mika, I know we can't talk about uh, your current project. <laughs> That's fine. That's totally fine. But uh, I'm. I think I believe you can talk about your uh, Emmy nominated, of course, cartoon through the woods. Yes. Um, um, yes. Oh, sorry. No, please. No. Uh, it was. Uh, it was this little tiny show. So I was a director for. I well, I've worked on. I was animation director on a show called Cyber Chase for a million years. Like literally, I started working on that show in 2006, and you know, it would it would like do a few episodes and do ten episodes. It was for PBS, and it was. So sometimes there would be like gaps between, and um, I worked with this woman named Ellen Doherty, and she is currently she's super high up at Fred Rogers company. And she at that time, or like when I worked with her on cyber chase, she was at WNET in New York. And um, so she was a producer of um, uh, cyber chase for many years. And then she went to Fred Rogers and she wrote this little show. And when I say little, it was 10 three minute episodes. Huh. And it was, um, so she created this, amazing world and it's um about a little it's called through the woods and it was about a little boy named Ryder and his dog wolfie you might see a, like he had a little red hood little red hoodie on and he would go through the woods to his grandmother's house who lived right behind them but you know when you're a little kid the house behind you could feel like it's an adventure yes an adventure to get to um but there was like a little path that they would use and and so every episode was learning about a different animal that you would see in your backyard um and so one episode was about spiders one episode was about butterflies and one up you know like birds and raspberries and <clears throat> deer or whatever and i had between two directing seasons of Cyber Chase, something like three months. And 
Um, <clears throat> so she brought this, she presented this project and I got the privilege to direct it. We were on this tiny, um, tiny, tiny group of animators, like something like five animators and like one rigger and like one layout or one concept designer who was uh, in Denmark, who won an Emmy for it. Um, and, uh, she, and, or so, so we did this little tiny project that took such no time. And then this, you know, you, you started putting these, like this one, three minute episode, we all had to choose an episode and we all unanimously picked this one about deer and in the winter. And it was at premiered at TIFF and it was at kids, it won kids screen. And it was like at nominated for an Annie and then two Emmy nominations and one Emmy win. And like, it was for something that was like, a tiny, tiny blip. It made all of our careers giant and like, uh, but also it's an amazing little short. I, I know PBS has bought it and it plays with one of another one of Fred Rogers shows, uh, Don Quixote. It's a puppet show. Um, and so you can actually find it now. Um, Americans can find it. Canadians had a harder time because we couldn't get the app that it played on. Yeah. And at that point it was only an app. It wasn't even oh, wow. like, like it, it played on an app and it, you know, here we were at the Emmys and we're like, you know, going up against Disney and, and all these other big shows and, and Sesame Street was there. I remember Sesame Street winning a bunch of awards while they were there. I didn't see Big Bird, but um, I did see, you know, some. some Big Bird Sesame wasn't the one Street. who accepted the Emmy? No, what? I know. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> But but yeah, you know, it was I'm I'm so proud of this show and and I know everyone who worked on it like holds this this spot. And I I, I mean I remember getting Ellen phoning me and at, she lived in Pittsburgh and um I remember her phoning me and I was like, Why are you phoning me? She doesn't phone me. <laughs> you know, you text, only text. And she said, Are you sitting down? And um I said, Yes. And she goes, So the Emmy nominations came out. And I was like, oh, did we get a nomination? And she goes, no. She said, you got a nomination. And then I said a expletive, which I'll not say here. And I remember being like, wait, what? Wait, what? And I remember not knowing at all what to do. And it was the most surreal moment of my life. I know I have my background bl blurred out, but my little certificate is right here. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it was a Sure. Yeah, it was a really cool moment. And it was I'm so proud of it. And like I said, every single person who worked on that show. And I remember getting it and thinking I had this surreal moment. I was like, yeah, I was the director, but all these other artists were the ones that brought it to life, too. Like, yeah, I, you know, without animators, without riggers, without uh, scene assemblers, without storyboard artists, without, you know, the the audio, without anything, I'm just standing here with a script. Well, you know, and without a script writer, I'm standing here with like nothing. And I remember writing every single person who worked on the show and be like, look what you did. Right <laughs> so, on. Yeah, it was really cool. Really cool. And uh, I'm actually going to go see her <laughs> next week. Right November. on. I haven't seen her since since Through the Woods played there, uh, at Pre Jeunesse and um, uh, Fred Rogers hosted a little Pre Jeunesse. So I'm going to go back. <laughs> So it's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I wish you the best on your new endeavor. This the newest yeah, show. Whatever That's it is. Super excited. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll be we'll be keeping our ears to the ground and, and taking care <laughs> yeah. of that. Um, I, I I really want to thank all of you for coming in today for the Van Arts' very first podcast. Maria, thank you for joining us. Mika, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Wayne, always a pleasure to see you, sir. Um, thank you for bringing me my breakfast. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> That's in my job description. Yeah, but I'm the one who wrote it in. Didn't oh, you write okay. a pencil? I'd uh, like to also say that Mika is an annual guest in our History of Animation yeah. program that Charles Phillips yep. hosts. I love and, it. Yeah. Except uh not this term, is that right? I know. I haven't I haven't I haven't got the call. I just wait for the call. I, heard, I will I, always say yes. Well, I confused <laughs> Charles because he he saw uh, an email with your name on it over my shoulder when, when just the other day, and he's like, "Wait, what did what's what's going on with Mika?" <laughs> and he thought that I had stolen you as a guest, um, but uh, I assured him that uh, that uh, this was not. Hey, uh, I'm often a surprise guest, so maybe you like 
spoiled surprises. I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, you know, Mika, you know, Charles, he's like Radar O'Reilly, where he schedules things before he knows we're going to do them. Yeah. And he was one of my teachers. He was. Yeah. Yeah. I again, he's someone I go way back. And yeah, Charles and Lee and it was amazing. Absolute treasure, in my opinion. Um, yeah. This is an animation uh, podcast uh, today. Uh, our next podcast uh, is going to be about acting, uh, which animators are. Uh, yep. But uh, we're going to be talking about um, TV stars next time. Uh, Van Arts is a very, very uh, renowned and intense acting program. Uh, our he department head, Chilton Crane, um, is a legend here at Van Arts um, and in film and television in general. And she's going to be coming in and joining me for episode two, along with Van Arts grad Thomas Nicholson. Thomas was recently actually, um, he's been doing a lot of great stuff on film or on TV, uh, but he actually got the chance to play David Bowie on uh, Legends of Tomorrow, the DC uh, show Legends of Tomorrow. And he got to sing uh as bowie as well and um, i've seen i've seen the, the the episode and it's uh he's great he's absolutely great um he's one of the oh, he's been on um virgin river on netflix another very popular television show and he's booked a lot of other great gigs uh, as well so if uh if you will i hope that uh, a lot of people out there will join myself chilton crane and thomas nicholson on our next episode of the van arts podcast thank you all for being here thank you for listening this is van arts Make our new life.